An observation I made when I see people in conflict is that everyone believes that they are on the right side. And one thing I learned about the right side and the wrong side is that the right side is always loving, compassionate, and empathetic. And the wrong side is hateful, it's arrogant, and it is self-righteous. I felt really conflicted in making this video because no matter what stance you take on this issue, there are going to be people who just hate you for it. But then I thought about the person I strive to be and the person that I am projecting to be and that is a person who has integrity who isn't afraid to voice her opinion so why would this topic be off limits I hope that you join me in this conversation with an open mind and an open heart I think more than ever it's so important that we listen to understand each other versus listening to respond to each other I hope you enjoy this video and please remember subscribe comment like it means so much to me so Let's begin. Hey guys, welcome back to Nearly by Nature. My name is Nearly. On this channel, we talk about social issues, we talk about spirituality, we talk about law of attraction, we talk about self-improvement, and so much more. If any of those topics or issues interest you, please remember to subscribe. It means so much to me. And of course, comment. I love to hear from you guys. On today's episode, we are going to be diving into a very deep and intense topic. We are going to be discussing the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. This conflict is decades old, and no matter how you tell it, there are going to be so many people who have objections and who feel like you left out a crucial part of telling the history of Palestine or Israel or this land. The origin of this conflict goes back centuries. I'm not going to go into details about the history of this land because honestly, I just don't think it's important. But just a quick synopsis, according to religious texts, God made a promise to Abraham and said that his son would inherit a land. Except Abraham had more than one son. He had Ishmael and Isaac and Isaac's descendants is the Jewish people and Ishmael's descendants are the Muslim people. And so the conflict begins. Now I don't know a lot about religion but I do know that God is not a real estate agent. That's all I'm gonna say. My intent is not to prove or argue who I believe is the rightful owner of this land. My intent is to kind of question recent events and to ask you, the viewer, a very simple question. What would you do? I wanted to share my perspective because I believe that it is a perspective that lacks in our media. So in recent events, Israeli police stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is a very holy site for Muslims in Israel. And what they did was they stormed the mosque and they cut the cords to the loudspeakers. Now this is all happening on the first day of Ramadan, which is the most holy month for all Muslim people. The Israelis reasoning for this was that the Israeli president was going to be giving a speech at the Western Wall and they didn't want the Azan to disrupt his speech. And honestly speaking, that's a really fucked up reason. You couldn't have scheduled or rescheduled that speech for another time. You had to do it at that exact time on that day of Ramadan, it just seemed like they were genuinely trying to bully the Palestinians. If the Palestinians were to do that to the Israelis, they would have shot and killed them. And so this event resurrected this war again with the Israelis and Palestinians. This is the worst violence seen between these two countries in years. 145 people killed in Gaza and 12 people killed in Israel, not to mention the mob attacks that have happened in mixed Arab and Jewish cities across Israel. This week alone, Israeli airstrikes killed 28 people, 10 of them children. 10 of them children. In Israel, two people died. Not to mention Israeli police stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque and began beating people up. 600 people wounded during Ramadan. <laughs> Hamas then retaliated and fired rockets into Israel that were blocked by Israel's defense system. Israel's missile defense systems lighting up the sky as they try to intercept incoming Hamas rockets. 130 of them were fired. When I read and learn about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, 
and I see how the Palestinians live and how the Israelis live. I see the resources coming out of Israel and the resources that lack in Palestine. When I see people thriving in Israel and people in survival mode in Palestine. Israel is a great place. It's a nice place. You should come and visit. Uh, like, I love Israel and I feel safe here. All that misconceptions are not, not true. Like, is, is, there's not people uh, with knives every day and there's not, pe uh, I don't know, people exploding. Palestinians? Yeah. yeah. No, but pretty much the life here is really good. For people living here, it's just normal to see people in the army walking around with guns and you feel completely safe and protected. When I see that Israel has one of the greatest and most powerful military systems in the world and Palestine has nothing but rocks. When I see the freedom Israelis have to roam around their country freely and the lack of freedom Palestinians have and the blockades that they have and the fact that they cannot leave their residencies without losing that residency, I see injustice. I see an unfair fight. It's really difficult for me to watch videos of Israelis occupying Palestinian homes where an Israeli settler can just walk up to a Palestinian's home with Israeli police and just take their home. Palestinians are powerless. Palestinians do not even have the right to vote in Israeli elections despite the fact that Israel occupies and controls their land. Right now in Palestine, their unemployment rate is at 60%. These are not people who have the resources to put up a fight against a country as powerful as Israel. Not only does Israel have one of the most powerful militaries in the world, they also have one of the most powerful defense systems in the world. The technology behind Israeli's defense system makes it impossible for Hamas's rockets to fire into Israel. When I look at the map of Israel and Palestine and I see how it changes constantly throughout the years and how Israel's land continuously grows and the Palestinian land shrinks. It's hard for me to not see that as ethnic cleansing. It's hard for me to not see that as apartheid. One thing I find extremely fascinating about Israel is the way they govern their nation and their people. Israeli Jews are mandated to serve in the military, um, I believe three or two years men and women. Israel is essentially a militarized country and I don't think people understand the gravitas of that. There is an abundance of resources and research and data that shows the aftermath of people being in the military and what that does to them. And so when you think about a country full of soldiers, I don't think people understand how much trauma and PTSD those people are walking around with and the amount of manipulation and brainwash that citizens of Israel have inherited. I don't think people understand the depth of having people be born into indoctrination of a country that automatically makes them into a soldier. I don't think people understand the impact of having a country that is militarized in that sort of fashion. Time will be when I was 16 and uh, I will get my first draft letter and in this draft letter it will be written that I am a property of the military. This is something that every kid in Israel goes through. When you're getting into the military system in the end you're already so much embedded inside the military. The military is a part of your identity. It's as much you as you're Israeli or Jewish for that matter in Israel. Their education system, their military system, their media, they all work together. And so that is all shaping the perspective for the Israeli people. It's very difficult for them to see anything outside of what they have been taught because no matter where they move within their country, everyone has the same feelings, has the same education, has the same perspective. So to see anything outside of that, it's going to be extremely difficult. And so when you have a conversation with a person who is a soldier in that way, you cannot get them to see outside of what they learned. על המודה, אף פעם לא ישבתי וחשבתי מה עם השכנה הערבייה שלי ואיך היא מרגישה, כאילו, זה לא... אני לא חושבת כאילו שזה מחוסר אכפתיות. פשוט מבחינתי, זה, זה, ברגע שזה מצב של עם עוין עם, מבחינתי זה לא רלוונטי איך היא מרגישה, את מבינה? הקיום שלנו תלוי ב, בארץ הזאת. 
אני מאוד אוהבת את המדינה הזאת, אני מאוד רוצה להישאר בה, אבל המקום הזה נהיה דתי, לאומני, פשיסטי מבחינתי, מאיך שאני רואה את זה. זה עצוב לי. כן, נכון, אני לא יכולה לומר, אני באמת יכולה לומר לעצמי שיש בי משהו פשיסטי, כאילו, <laughs> אני לא, אני לא מסתירה את זה, אני פשוט לא מבינה שיש דרך אחרת, באמת. Until they are able to... except the fact that they might be manipulated. And the truth is we are all susceptible to being manipulated by education, by media, just as much as people who are in Israel. But the fact is they are part of a country that forces them into being part of a military. And I think that really changes how a person acts and feels and responds. Now, a lot of Americans support Israel, especially evangelical Christians. Evangelical Christians believe that by sending all the Jews back to Israel, that will trigger revelations. Basically, the Messiah will come and two thirds of the Jews will die and everyone will convert to Christianity. And if you don't convert to Christianity, you'll die. And the worst of times. America is Israel's biggest supporter. We give them billions of dollars a year in support and military defense. Every single U.S. president must be pro-Israel in order to even be a U.S. president. Anytime anyone in our government speaks out against Israel, they are called anti-Semitic, and I think that is extremely problematic. I can support Jewish people and their basic human rights and also condemn Israel for taking away the human rights of Palestinians. It's very interesting to me because America will support Israel because they believe that they are the rightful owners of that land. Um, but at the same time, America will ignore the Native American issue here in our country. They will omit the history of the Native Americans from our history books. They will not teach us about how they re-educated and separated Native American families. They will not teach us that there was an ethnic cleansing of Native Americans in this country. They will not teach us that this land is sacred land to the Native Americans. And after everything they took from the Native Americans, after they killed them, re-educated them, separated their families, took away their heritage, they now build pipelines on um, the small pieces of land they gave them. And so this country, America, will support Israel in its right to its land, but ignore the Native Americans in its own country. And I find that to be so incredibly hypocritical. This war is not about land to me. It's a war about power. And it's been very easy for people to pit Jews and Muslims against each other. And if it was up to the Jews and the Muslims in this country, I do believe that they would choose to live peacefully and harmoniously together. I think that's what most human beings want, is to live in peace and to be happy and joyful and not be in survival mode. What's happening in Israel and Palestine is not a fair fight. Basic human rights are being taken away from the Palestinians. And my question to you as a viewer is, how long do you wait till someone comes into your home and takes your home and kicks you out and takes away your basic human rights. How long do you wait to retaliate? And is it wrong to retaliate? Is it wrong to be called a terrorist if you retaliate? Would you fight for your home, for your land? And if you fought back, what if the world called you a terrorist for it? What if the world called you radical for fighting back for your own home, your ancestral home. I do believe in peace, and I believe that the right side is the side of those who are being oppressed, the side of those who have a lack of resources, the side of those who have their homes being taken away from them, the side of those who have no rights, have no rights to an election, who have no rights to walk freely in their land. I believe that the Palestinian people deserve our support and our acknowledgement of their struggle. Right now, Palestinian children are dying. Children should not be dying. Ignoring the fact that people have no resources and have no ability to fight back, to fight for their own land, is the wrong side. So my question to you stands, if today someone was to come to your home with the police and say, this is my home because God said so, Would you fight back or would you peacefully pack your things and walk away?